Sharkoon are renowned for hitting the mark when it comes to good quality cases and offering excellent value for money. So does the TK5M RGB continue this trend? Stay right here to find out. Hey there, welcome back. This is Chris for Kit Guru, and today I'm looking at the Sharkoon TK5M RGB case for review. Now, the budget segment of the case market is massive, something that I've touched on many times before, so it can be really difficult to pick the right case for your needs. And to stand out, a case really does have to do something above and beyond because, well, if it doesn't, then it just simply fades into the background along with so many other cases that are out there. Meet the TK5M RGB then. This is a mid-tower case that ships with four 120mm ARGB fans, a tempered glass side panel and a large vented front, so it is an airflow orientated case. On first impressions, the build quality of the TK5M is good, even better than what I expected with very little flex, which is really nice, given that this case at the time of filming is available for just £63 on Amazon. So already it's offering a lot at the price point that Shakun are asking. On the specification, the TK K5M can accommodate ITX to ATX boards, has seven full-size PCIe expansion slots, there's room to install up to two 3.5 inch or five 2.5 inch drives, it comes with an integrated ARGB controller, tempered glass and fairly decent I.O. The TK5M isn't the biggest mid-tower out there, size-wise it's 41 by 20 by 45 centimeters and weighs in at just 5.3 kilos. Internally, Shakun state that the max air cooler height is 15.7 cm and for graphics a card up to 33.5 cm can be used with the front fan removed and then that gets a little bit shorter down to 31 with the front fan installed. So again at the price point it's including everything that somebody's going to need to build a budget sensitive system. Moving around the case the front of the TK5M has this huge intake and this simply pulls away to gain access to the front filter. This is a full coverage magnetic filter and it helps to keep the TK5M nice and clean. The mesh on the front panel is fairly fine and will help to show off the RGB of the front fans. To the side the tempered glass side panel is secured with thumb screws but these are not captive and with the side panel off you can see the three pre-installed fans at the front and the one to the rear of the case. The included fans are only three pins so there is no PWM functionality here but they do also come with a Moleworks adapter to power them separately from your motherboard if this is something that you want to do. If you want to add more fans then there is room at the top for two additional 120 or 140 mil fans here and the TK5M also includes a magnetic dust filter to the top. Again it just makes it real easy for cleaning these out. For IO, the TK5M has a power and reset button, one USB Type-C 3.2 Gen 2, two USB 3 ports and a separate microphone and headphone jack. Now the reset switch on this by default is connected to the included RGB hub that is located in the back of the case. So the lighting feature can be adjusted without using motherboard control if you don't have a motherboard that supports this. The RGB has 14 different modes and in terms of software is compatible with all the usual programs. So MSI Mystic Light, Asus Aura Sync, Gigabyte RGB Fusion and ASRock Polychrome Sync. Around the back of the case there is a bulge side panel that is again held on with thumb screws. Now the internals in terms of cable management space is really rather limited so the extra space afforded by the bulge in the side panel is needed to keep things nice and neat. There are generous cutouts on the motherboard tray for all our cables to pass through but you know, at 63 quid, there are no grommets. We weren't really expecting them, but Sharkoon have done a really good job of rounding off the metal panel for nice smooth edges. And again, it just helps them to save some of that cost. There were also a really good number of tie down points around the back of the motherboard tray as well. Below the motherboard tray is the power supply shroud where PSUs are inserted from the back and not the rear so you do have to slide them in there. It can accommodate power supplies up to 17.5cm long with the included 3.5 and 2.5 inch drive caddy installed. Now obviously a bigger PSU can be installed there should you not need that hard drive cage. The power supply also has a slotting type dust filter to keep our power supply dust free. Now it's not the best implementation but again at 63 quid, I wasn't expecting to see anything special here so it will do at this price point. The feet of the case help lift it around 15mm off the floor as well so that our power supply can suck in some fresh air. 
Internally to the front there is a sled for an SSD below the graphics card and a 120mm fan can also be mounted to the top of the power supply shroud should you want to add in any extra airflow there. There's also a cutout for PCIe cables to be routed straight up to the graphics card. To the right hand side of the motherboard tray there is space for two 2.5 inch SSDs, something that we've seen on the Be Quiet Pure Base 500 or the Montex Sky One Lite that I recently reviewed. The TK5M ships with a manual, some stickers and a small accessories box that includes mounting screws and a PCIe slot cover. Now the TK5M arrives out the box with snap off PCIe covers so once they've been removed then they cannot be reinstalled. So far so good then, looking around the TK5M the case offers more than enough to build a half decent system in but one thing I've not talked about yet is water cooling. To the front there isn't enough room to fit a 360 AIO and 3 fans due to the cutout on the power supply shroud. Now I suppose you could fit a 240 here above the shroud but then that starts making compromises and Sharakoon don't even mention water cooling support on their product page for this case. There is potential to mount an AIO to the top but personally for a build in this case in the budget segment that it's aimed at I would stick with air cooling and given that it includes three fans at the front and one to the rear and that large intake mesh the TK5M should provide more than enough airflow. So that's our system ready, but what was it like to build in? Well, the TK5M is a painless experience. It's a basic case that doesn't require you to remove any complex panels in order to fit components. One thing that isn't a direct TK5M problem is being able to access the 8-pin power connectors to the top of the motherboard. When you start fitting air cores and little bits then room starts to get a little bit tight and you can't really access these very well. And it's nothing new in the PC case market and I think that all manufacturers maybe need to get around the table and see if they can come up with an option to sort this problem out. I've left the RGB controller hooked up to the reset button to keep things nice and simple for this build and to see what all the modes that Shakun have included have to offer. Now cable management around the back was also really easy during the build given that I have a fully modular power supply but I could see things getting a little bit tight if you use a non-modular power supply unit and needed to use the drive caddy as well. With all those extra cables and the caddy it just starts getting really tight. Overall then the build has gone well but how does it perform? To look at this I set all the internal fans and the CPU cooler to the normal mode in the Gigabyte BIOS and using the three pin connectors to control the fans via the motherboard rather than using the Model X connectors and running the fans at full speed. That's going to sound like a jet engine, granted it's nice to have the option but I simply can't see anyone wanting to do this. Running Cinebench R23 and Time Spy Extreme, the TK5M perform well. Removing the mesh panels first, our temperatures remain fairly constant give or take a degree or so. Next I removed the side panel. This did allow more airflow to reach the graphics card and bring the temperatures down a little bit overall compared to the default configuration. The TK5M in comparison to other recent case reviews also performs well but do note that I have adjusted the Sky One Lite results. This is to take into account that the ambient temperature when this was tested was around 6 degrees higher. 
When it came to the noise levels in the TK5M, it was a really good case for this. Uh, idle with the glass on and off was we sat in the low 30 decibel region, and then under load, this rose just a little bit. And then finally, just to see what it was like, I tested this with the included fans connected to the Mowitz connectors, and this pushed us up over the 40 decibel barrier. Our testing shows that the TK5M has plenty of airflow and performs well, but should you buy one? Now in recent months I've looked at a few cases, including the Montex Sky One Lite at 55 quid and the Deep Cool CK56D at 84 quid. Both these cases included fans and are listed in comparison in our testing to the TK5M, and that sits somewhere in the middle in terms of price, so how does it compare? First, aesthetics. Yet yeah, they're subjective, and personally, out of the three, I would probably go with the deep call. I am a bit of a sucker for white cases. I think overall it just looks a little bit better than the TK5M. In terms of functionality, all three are close in terms of spec. However, the TK5M won't allow for front walk cooling support, as I mentioned earlier. So even if you did go with an AIO, you're going to be limited for options here. On build quality, you know, this is the real one. Where you spend an extra quid here and there, things just get a little bit better every time. And again, in comparison to the deep call, the TK5M is built well, but just not quite as well. If you compare it to the Sky One Lite, you get an additional fan in the TK5M, but you get similar front IO as well. Now, reviewing budget cases is hard. This segment is probably the hardest because, as you can see, there is just so little to differentiate each and every case and recommend one over another. So again, as I've said time and time again, when you talk at purely the TK5M on its own and ignore everything else that is out there. For 63 quid, you get a case that includes four case fans and an RGB hub, tempered glass and decent I.O. It performed really well in testing, it's really easy to build in, and along the way it just didn't throw any spanners in the works either. So for me, can I recommend the TK5M for a modest, budget-sensitive build? Yeah, for the price it's a great little case. But as always, it's not just down to me. What do you guys think? If this is a case that you are looking to buy and if you have any questions, then please do drop them down below in the comments. But that's it from me today. I've been Chris for KitGuru. I'll see you for the next one.